Tyrek here with Crisis Enough Ministries. Today I want to take a look at the topic of the complete God. So I want to glorify my God by telling you who he is and who he reveals himself to be through the pages of scripture. The reason I use the sentence the complete God is because God is not complete if he's not triune as the scriptures declare him to be. So he is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that has never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he will always be eternally the same. The reason I'm making this video is because I'm seeing a lot of Muslims um, not being able to comprehend the basic concept of a trinity. Um, I'm also seeing, you know, in Judaism, even though the trinity is revealed in their Torah, they still cannot grasp that concept. I really believe that this is something that has to be revealed uh, to each individual from God. But I pray that this still blesses you because God can still use this to reveal this to you from the pages of scripture. Uh, also through this, through this video, you know, I don't limit God at all. God can do anything and he can reveal to you at any, any moment if you're truly seeking for him. So eternal unity, let's look at the word unity and what that means. In the dictionary, unity means the state or quality of being one or united as a whole. Um, another definition is a condition of harmony. So a condition of harmony. So when we look at the universe itself that's created, right? There is a trinity in the universe. The trinity would be the space in the universe, the time in the universe, and the matter. Even when we break up that trinity, Space itself has its own trinity. So we have uh, height, length, and width. For time, we have past, present, future. And for matter, we have solid, liquid, and gas. So we see that when we speak about universe, we don't say, well, we have three universes because there's space, time, and matter in there. Uh, when we speak of time, we don't say that there's three times. No, we say time is one. Although, in time, there's past, present, future. And it would be the same thing as matter. We don't say that there's three matters. No, we say matter is one, but it can exist in three different forms, right? It could be solid, liquid, or gas. The second thing I would, I would love for you guys to reflect on, and really just be humble and think about what, I, what I'm saying here, okay? In Psalm 94, 9, there's a question that's posed here, and it is this. He who made the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? So there's a basic concept here from our creator. That is, if he created the eyes, can God see as well? If he created the hearing, can God hear? The basic principle is this. How can anything be given to somebody if first the person that is giving it doesn't have it? So how can God give us sight if he himself does not have sight? How can he give us hearing if he himself does not have hearing? It doesn't work. How can I give somebody, you know, a brand new car as a gift if I don't have a brand new car to give as a gift? It just simply doesn't work. And when you look at creation, creation itself is created in trinities and in unity, right? So we saw the universe, we saw each aspect of the universe, space, <clears throat> time, and matter, how even that is divided in three, but yet it's a perfect unity. You know, a family unit. God has created family. He's created man and woman. They become one. They create a family. That family is called one family. And within that family, there's sacrificial love. And there are unity. But they're still one. So how can God create this idea of of sacrificial love and unity in numbers if he is not himself unity from eternity right uh, you also have to look at the aspect of love itself you know what is love love biblical love at least is not necessarily feeling but it is an action it is a sacrifice so if God was one in number from eternity, it would not be a unity, but it would be 
uh, a singularity and it would be because we know that everything that is singular is in isolation right if I separate myself and I go into a room and I never talk to anybody again I would be in isolation now can I have love inside of me sure I can have love inside of me but I can never manifest that love to anybody because there's no one there to show my love to so that poses another question if God is one in singularity right like single one and he made a creation in unity first of all it wouldn't be possible because he can't give something he doesn't have and secondly just say if it were possible that would actually make God dependent on his creation and he would be dependent on his creation in this aspect where even though he may have love inside he would be dependent on his creation to manifest that love for love to be in action because when you're alone you can't show that love that's why God in eternity past is a unity is one God exists eternally in three persons and there was perfect love between Father Son Holy Spirit and we're actually created to share in that love I'm going to leave you with one last point. Um, in the Torah, Israel would have, or even the Jews today, they have a Jewish confession of faith. Okay, it's called the, uh, the Shema Yisrael, and it is based on Deuteronomy 6, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. And it says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. The word one here is in the Hebrew, because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, is ichad, which means one in unity. Now the Hebrew does have another word for one, and that word would be yahid. Yahid means one in number, not a unified one. And yahid is never used for God anywhere in the Old Testament. It's never used anywhere in the Old Testament. So we know that when the Jews, the Jewish people do have their confession of faith and they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, they are saying that the Lord our God is Ichad, is one in unity. We can even look into the book of Genesis, in the beginning was the word, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, right? Uh, the word God there in the Hebrew is Elohim, which actually means God. So it's pointing to a plurality even there. If we want it to be a singular God, it would be in the beginning El created. Uh, we can also look at when God, God created man. It says this, when they were actually speaking within the Godhead, let us make man in our image. So let us, plurality, our plurality. So I'll leave you with this, guys. I hope that you're blessed. I hope that this opened your understanding more to how the Trinity is really the true God, the complete God. And without the Trinity, you're looking at an isolated God, a, a God that, you know what, I'll, I'll give credit, may have love inwardly but can never express it outwardly. And if you can express it outwardly, it would be uh, dependent on what is already created outside of himself. Because from eternity, he would, he would have been isolated from everything else, even um, the manifestation of his own love. So God bless you guys, and have a good day.